Welcome to Ann Arbor Democracy, a place for conversation about how our local leaders are elected and how political decisions are made, what this looked like in the past and what it looks like now. This project aims to explore the recent history and current reality of Ann Arbor Democracy. This is part three of a conversation with Lou Belcher, who served on Ann Arbor City Council representing Ward 5 from 1974 to 1978 and served as mayor from 1978 to 1985. The mayoral election of 1977 was a contest between Republican Lou Belcher and Democratic incumbent Mayor Al Wheeler. In that election, Mayor Wheeler won by a single vote, but it was discovered that 20 township residents had voted by mistake. Wheeler continued to serve as mayor until a do-over election in 1978, which Lou Belcher won. In Part 3, Lou talks about his advocacy for hydropower at the city's dams, negotiations to establish the hands-on museum at the Old City Firehouse, and the work of community leaders organizing the Ann Arbor Summer Festival. Lou shares how the National Republican Party embraced him after the contested election of 1977. I became the star of the Republican Party, and I really became a star because now the head of the Republican Party, Bill Brock, uh, calls me and says, Lou, we've got a project for you. Will you do it? Your one-vote election has become super popular, and everybody wants to know about it. We want you to go on a team with us in the summer to all the colleges we can fly to on weekends and land, give them the, the problem. Now, you couldn't do this today with computers. You'd never be able to do it. They didn't know who it was. Okay, here's the situation. So we go into the Republican, to every major university we could get to in the summer. It was called the Concord. Concord. Uh, the Concord uh, group. Now uh, the Republican Party is flying me around on weekends, and we'd fly into a university on Friday. The Young Republican Club of that university would meet us at the airport, uh, and the four of us would fly. They'd take us back to campus. I, I, I was just along. I was a kind of a mentor. I went in incognito because the problem they gave them is here's an election that was held in the United States. We lost by one vote. We're going to give you the background of the candidate, and you guys come up in the next two days to the young Republicans with a winning strategy. So on Sunday, you guys are going to present your strategies to us as to how you win this vote. Remember, you've lost it by one vote. It's been close. I gave him all the details. With computer day, you just punch that in, you'd find it was Ann Arbor. These guys are calling everybody to find out where this election was. Oh, that's so fascinating. So, okay, so it was it was a hypothetical that they didn't know was real. Or did, did they know it was real and they just didn't know where it happened? They didn't know where it happened. They knew it was okay. real. Okay. But they didn't know where it happened or how big the city was or what. Was it like a big reveal at the end of the weekend? Like, oh. by the way, here's the oh. guy. Well, I kept going around. I just tie on to a team. And I just kind of listened to him. I didn't say a whole lot. And I mean, I mean you know, Ralph Schmuckle, you know, from Denver, <laughs> something like that. And, and you hear him say, God damn, Belcher, what an asshole. <laughs> I mean, why would you do that? I don't know. We, I have no ideas. Stupid to me. <laughs> anyway, so on Sunday afternoon, before we flew out, they held the presentations. <laughs> now, after they've had this all weekend, and they've got six, seven teams. So the University of Texas had ten teams there. Or something like that. They would say, here, here was the winning strategy that won the election. After they listened to it, and the team that got the closest to the winning strategy, you know, they got a little trophy or anything. But we'd really like you to introduce the guy who did it. And 
Everybody's looking around. The mayor, here, Lou Belcher. He's that dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the summer, we'd gone to 15 colleges or something every week. Did I tell you what my philosophy of politics is? I don't think you did. Very simple. Thomas Jefferson, in the very first moments of our country, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those three things make a community. Life, their safety, fire department, police department, protection, laws, law. They have that right to live free without fear. So that's number one. Number two, liberty. Americans like liberty. Don't tell them what they want. They're going to tell you what they want. So liberty is everything I believe in. It is do not over overpower a people. And our governments are doing it. I was also the environmental mayor of Ann Arbor at the time. I put the low head hydros in the river, then sold the electricity to, to uh, uh, Detroit Edison. And I used those low head hydros as a source power to power our, our whole sewer system, not sewer system, but the- uh, uh, Water treatment? Water treatment plant. And when we had, uh, floods, we would overflow our retaining ponds and dump, uh, dump uh, uh, raw sewage into the Huron. It was cost us $750,000 a dump. So I said, we're not going to, because we'd run out of diesel fuel in three or four days. All these generators we have, they ran out of diesel. So I was looking for a power system. I didn't have to depend on diesel. And so I found a company that built low-head hydros that would, uh, the current here River is strong enough to power them. Wow. But, see, this is where I made a mistake. The technology was fine. The equipment was fine. But the company went out of business. And it was not a replacement company. And it was working. So I thought, well, maybe we should buy the thing. I have another axiom, never let government run a business. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try that. I will screw that up. You know, you're bringing up um, a couple ideas that I've talked to other people about, and I'm curious to hear your take. I read in articles real substantive conversations, debates around growth and what the city should look like um, and how much bigger it can get. Can't what get is... much bigger. Yeah, and, and that was a conversation during your time. So how did you approach it and how did you, how, was that a partisan issue where the Republicans stood and where the Democrats stood? I didn't get a lot of opposition. I didn't want the city into lateral growth. It's the most expensive growth in the world. And I didn't want to interrupt the lives of all these people. They have different lives. If you take Barton Hills, which it said it was voted the most expensive township in the United States, Barton Hills is. Wow, I did not know that. Yes. Then you take Ipsy Township. The difference between those two, Sile, Pittsfield, and they all have different lifestyles. You couldn't build a place like this in the city of Ann Arbor, where the park, bicycle paths, you couldn't. And then the trouble with the township islands, I got to get rid of those, because I almost lost my life in the goddamn thing. The biggest fire we had in Ann Arbor while I was mayor was the huge gas tanks uh, of uh, Gulp Silkworth. All these above ground gas tanks in the Ann Arbor, down on Plymouth Road. They're all sitting there. Ann Arbor, you have to bury the gas tanks. These are all up on stilts. So what happens? It catches on fire. And we now 
have got a roaring fire going with all these gas tanks. And we've got a 60,000 gallon gas tank that is full. And I get the call, it uh, says from the chief, you better get down over here and take a look because we might have to have a lot of different departments coming in. And some we don't even have agreements with. Well, this thing is huge. Lou, we could wipe out a circle of one mile within this whole place. So I said, I'll, I'm going to come down, and I need a police car that's got a radio in it. Because I didn't have a radio. I didn't have a phone. God, right now. And I, we had 10,000 kids playing soccer every night during the week. How did you get a tornado come in? How do I? It's the old-fashioned way. Two arms, two arms, the British are coming. Send police cars all over with loudspeakers into neighborhoods. Evacuate, evacuate. You couldn't tell them a whole lot. This is Township Island. So I call all township supervisors together. And I said, gentlemen, ladies, we're willing to sign a treaty with you. Pittsfield had been, it was a charter township. You cannot, under Michigan law, annex a, a township like a charter township unless you annex the whole township. You can't annex a part of it. But the other five were not charter. And I said, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're either going to we're either going to have you cede all of your township islands to the city, and they become city. For this, we will lock in our our boundary, and we will not annex any of you or any part of you without permission. Without well agreement. Agreement. Yeah. And so the lateral growth was going to go out here. I mean, we knew that. But they'll have different lifestyles. And they got their own areas and their own communities and their own. So that's what we did. We locked in the, basically the expressway ring and said, Ann Arbor will not go beyond this point. And you will cede all of your township islands to us. It's been a fight. I knew what was going to happen. I talked to over the wall my my council. I was not a dictator. Everything that I, that give they give credit to me is not mine. For example, the hands on museum. Oh yeah, I did it. Oh yeah, I didn't do it. One woman did it. One woman had that passion. So we had a contest. We got the old fire station. We want to preserve it. Let's do it not for profit. They'll preserve it, they'll use it, they'll occupy it. And it came down to two, it came down to two, it came down to the woman alone, no support, passion. Okay. Versus the Ann Arbor Civic Theater to build us a theater in the round. We eliminated all the rest of them. So it came down to to two, and then the city council had to pick one of the two. Either the hands-on museum or a theater in the round? Yes. And she made the presentation by herself with great passion. How much this has done for communities and how kids learn. And, and I called an intermission. And after the intermission, Civic Theater came in and said, we'd like to withdraw. The next morning, Cynthia was in my office, said, I need $10,000 to start this. And I had twenty-five or 30000 left in my emergency funds, which I kept hotel rooms. And we had homeless people. That, they always had hotel rooms for them. I, I bought those tickets. Uh, so I took 10000 out of my fund and said, okay, are you... What are you going to do with the 10000 to the Because I was, but it, it hit a hot spot. Remember I told you, if the community gets behind it, they'll, they'll, there's nothing to stop them. And they got behind that. And volunteers up the butt for that there. 
Now they're expanding down the building. Now schools come on from all over. Life, liberty, but the pursuit of happiness. The Ann Arbor Summer Festival, everybody says, I started it. I didn't start it. A University of Michigan engineering professor started it, Packard. I know his name, Packard. He came to see me about it. He said, Lou, we want a Shakespeare for a festival. We believe that we really, they're Shakespeare nuts. And we think it would really go big in Ann Arbor. Well, I didn't know. So I asked Eugene Power, I said, can you get an artsy group together for me? Here's the deal. Do we, can we support a, a Shakespeare festival? And he got all the art people together as he could, which is probably a lot. I didn't even get interfere with that. I don't know him. And he came and he said, well, we've decided that with a Shakespeare festival up north, there's no way that we would really be, I mean, that thing was established up there and people go up there to what, and we don't want to compete with it. So back to the drawing boards, summer festival, that's what this group, the same group that said, we can't do this. I said, what can we do to fill this spot? And that's when they came up with the, the summer festival. And it's turned out to be quite successful. But I didn't do that. They did that. In part four of my conversation with Lou Belcher, we talk about his relationships with sister cities Haikon, Japan, and Tübingen, Germany, his collaboration and work with the university, the city's history with mass transit, and his thoughts about politics now. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be alerted to more content like this.